If Dickie Allen or Travis Ryan was silent for like almost a minute, we would be like, where, yeah. where, where is it? What's up, everybody? Mark with Cardivox Academy here, and today we're doing something cool. I say that all the time because we only do cool stuff here. That's why you keep watching the videos. That's why you like, share, and subscribe, right? That plug was a little on the nose, but I'm keeping it because it was a good one. Uh, today we're doing something really cool. We're checking out a band, Rivers of Nile. Actually, one of my favorite uh, metal albums of all time, Monarchy, was written by this band. So I'm very excited to talk about it. We're going to be talking about The Void From Which No Sound Escapes. I'm going to double check and make sure I got it right because, yeah, The Void From Which No Sound Escapes. Hell yeah. Um, we're going to be checking out that song. We've actually got the vocalist here with us. We've got Jake Diefen De Jake Diefenbach here with us uh, to talk about the song, and I'm really excited. Um, now, I have to say, I have committed the reactor's cardinal sin in that I've heard this song before, but anybody who knows me knows that I like River of Nile, and if you think the work came out and I didn't listen to it, you'd know I'd, I'm lying. Like, it would, be a, it would be a poor lie, right? So I have heard this song before, but it's always fun to have the vocalist here with us uh, in order to kind of dig in and learn a little bit more. It's always kind of like hearing it for the first time, but yeah. So if, it's, if, you, if you only watch first-time reactions, I still love you. Um, now, uh, what we do here, again, my name is Mark. I'm a metal vocalist myself in a band called Kardashev. We released an album called Liminal Right through Metal Blade Records on June 10th, so a little while ago. And uh, I'm a vocal coach specializing in, you know, harsh, nasty, disgusting deathcore and death metal vocal sounds. And if you like the content, if you like the way that we take reactions and make them educational, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, put a banner in your front yard. I don't know, whatever you got to do. And uh, and uh, if you really love the content, we do have a Patreon where we have vocal themed events. We have karaoke nights. We have listening parties. It's a lot of fun. So I think that uh, I think that uh, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead. Let's pull Jake in. Yo, what's up, Jake? How you doing? Yo, what's going on, Mark? It's good to be here. Yeah, dude. Thanks so, for having me. Oh, dude, you're so welcome. I was actually excited uh, when I heard that this was gonna when this was gonna work because, like you probably heard me say in the intro, Monarchy was and still is uh, an album that I I absolutely love. Um, it's the first album from y'all that I heard, and I remember specifically the song "Sand Baptism." I just thought that was nuts. The 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 way that y'all and I'll be honest as well, um, Monarchy and um, well, mostly Monarchy even influenced Kardashev's writing a little bit too. The way that y'all mess with ambience and aggression at the same time. So yeah, it was really cool. I was really glad to yeah, I was really glad to talk to you as well. Um, now I know that you finished a tour up a little while ago. Um, I was actually at the show that you played here in Arizona. Um, how was coming back from that tour? How'd your voice feel? Feel good? Everything everything awesome or kind of how was it? Every, it was it was really good, man. It was it was a while for me on the road since the last time before that tour, but coming back from it, everything was still in place. Still got my vocal box, you know. I'm still feeling good about uh, my performance, um, and looking forward to coming out again more this year. Hell yeah! And just continuing on, but uh, we had a lot of fun on that tour. Cool, yeah, dude. It looked like it, man. I I love. Like just as an aside, before we get into a, so a song, um, I absolutely love just like your ambiance on stage. Um, the way that you like set the mic in your uh, in your in like it looked like sort of a like a gi something that you were wearing, um, <laughs> and then you'll just like look out on the crowd and uh, I don't know. It's a very imposing, a very imposing <laughs> presence that I that I really like. Um, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. All right, everybody. Sorry for that hard cut. Uh, I had to upgrade Zoom to have unlimited uh, limits so, or unlimited minutes, so that so that the video didn't get. Cut <laughs> um, yeah, so that was thanks for thanks for hanging out while I while I did that. Um, so, you know, one thing I always ask every guest that we have on. Obviously, you know, I've heard this song before. Um, I I love this song, but I always ask: Is there anything that you want to kind of point out about the song? What the song is about? Maybe maybe an interesting thing about, you know, when you were in the studio, anything that you want to tell me beforehand or do you want me to go in as as blind as possible? Let's go in as blind as possible. I think that'd be a little bit more fun. Every time. Some someday, someday <laughs> a vocalist is going to be like, let me set you up for success, but not today. That's all right. That's cool. Right. <laughs> so I think I think we should uh, I think we should just go ahead and get into it. Let's go ahead and let's do uh, let's jump in. So this is Rivers of Nile, the void from which no sound escapes.
and I'm going to pause it at the worst possible time. <laughs> no, actually, we're, we're going to go back and we're going to check out that transition, actually, because it's a really good one. But I wanted to kind of point out um, something and, in, in, you know, you may have thoughts about it as well. But I think one of the, my favorite things about um, Rivers of Nile and the way that y'all go about music is how much time you will take to build up ambience and tension. Like, it, you know, it, it like when I listen to this song and when I listen to it now, I think to myself, like at no point and you, you know, I wasn't in the studio, so you can tell me, but I feel like at no point was anybody like, you know, all right, how do we want to handle like this intro? It sounds to me like this is just part of the song. A lot of, a lot of bands, they'll treat the intro as something to get past, but the intro here is like, it's, it's, it's like seeing the food on the menu, but like, like before it comes out to you and like, it's, it's tantalizing you in that way. Um, so I'm just kind of curious what being in a very ambient band myself, what is y'all's mindset with with all the time given where a lot of bands, they'd be like, yo, an almost two minute intro. Are you kidding me? That's suicide. But it sounds great. And I love it. So kind of compositionally, what's what's the mindset of of y'all when you when you go for these long ambient intros? Well, I mean, I think it's a really good question because um, ultimately what's happening is it's really establishing some sort of dynamic balance for the heavy part when it sets in, especially for us in the song where, um, where we actually utilize that ambient buildup to have solo vocal parts that kind of like leading into the bigger part that opens up and the song fully comes into like motion and starts moving. And uh, I, I think for, for how the song was written lyrically with all that time in the beginning, um, you know, uh, we were able to kind of like not only fill that space correctly and give it the kind of the 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 right amount of like harsh vocals in a subtle way, but um, really just kind of lead into the next part, which we paused right before, and like really kind of like move into it correctly without not having too little vocals or you know too much going on. So I think it was. That's kind of our mindset with this this part. Sorry, sorry for another hard cut, but <clears throat> just had some audio issues. But that's actually a really good answer, and I think I think that that's one of the things that when I first heard Rivers of Nile, kind of attracted me to the sound. At the time, I was listening to a lot of like pretty much like I was listening to a lot of like either like deathcore or like proggy gent, you know, like the space metal thing that was very popular for a while. Um, and I hesitate to say it this way because it sounds a little backhanded to other bands. So I'll explain what I mean. But I think one of the things I enjoy about y'all's sound is that it's very like mature. Now, that's not to say that bands that are all maximal all the time are immature. And that's that's kind of the reason I hesitate. Like, I love songs that just go hard start to finish. I love them. Right. Like certain bands that go hard start to finish, like knock loose. Kublai Khan, uh, you know, I would not call those immature bands. I would call them like extremely well developed. But I think that maybe confident is a good word. There's a certain confidence in, in, in the dynamics. Like you don't have to be going hard all the time because when you do, it it rips, right? Um, and I love that. Let's go ahead and let's actually hear this transition. I'm going to go back for the viewers, for anybody who may may not have heard this song, so that they can kind of hear what you're talking about. And and yeah, very well explained. So let's go back to like maybe one, two. Hey, let's go back to like 120. Here we go. Give us some time. Give us some time to savor the flavor. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, that's a good place for us to pause. So let's talk some vocal technique here. Um, now, 
I'm going to be fully transparent with you. The first time I heard Rivers of Rivers of uh, Nile, especially coming from like, like I said, like Deathcore or like Genty Prague, the sound of your voice was very strange to me. Um, I remember being like, I it's I didn't dislike it. I just didn't know how to like absorb it because there's a lot of tone and there's a lot of there's a lot of. You know, a lot of bands, what they'll do is they'll be like, let me fit 10,000 techniques into five seconds. But with you, it's like, let me put subtle nuance here and there instead. And I've actually kind of overall with my taste in music, I've grown to kind of like that a little bit more. Um, so my main and, and it's a very unique tone as well. Like it certainly has there are certainly other vocalists that we could say you you fit in with. Right. But I feel like less people sound like you than sound like you know, your, your standard deathcore vocalist, which by the way, I'm not throwing shade at deathcore. Deathcore is great. You know what I mean? How did you talk to me kind of like about how you found this tone, you know, cause we all, especially, especially, you know, people of people of our, of our age bracket, we didn't have a lot of like YouTube resources and stuff like that. Um, so what was that process like? Um, it's a really good question. Uh, you know, I think for the beginning half of, uh, so one second. Um, I think for like the beginning half of the band, I was kind of like, and even before that, I was really kind of finding my own voice. I was really experimenting. I was like taking bits and pieces from other artists that I liked and kind of like putting it into my own unique sound structure that would come out naturally. And then I sort of like hit a wall where I was really trying to sound like, I, th I remember I was like, really kind of bummed out because like I couldn't get my voice to sound the way like other maybe deathcore vocalists sound or like, I couldn't I couldn't get that like massive headway, you know, bolding sound. And I was like, I really wanted that. And uh, I remembered, I was like, maybe that's just not me. That's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. Um and at least for now. So I I I remember right before we started recording uh the conscious seat of light um, with Eric Rutan, um, I just really started focusing on opening my mouth up and just like mm. really cutting dry with the syllables to the point where like my screaming voice kind of has this ability to, to not have a list like my talking voice does. <laughs> and, and like, I, I just, I just started really like trying to experiment more with how I can, I could scream and channel my own unique sound with, with holding my mouth open a certain way, making sure I'm pronunciating things correctly. And over time, it really kind of cultivated and sculpted the way my voice has evolved through this band. And um, yeah, that's that's because I, I know I roll with more like a fry type monotone, mid range yeah. style. Um, but what I found is. It, uh, with this technique that I do, it allows me to like always be at a calm place while also having like a lot of power or air that I can push out. Yeah. And then that, that equally allows me to like move around a little bit more than like, I'm not going to say anyone else, but then more than I thought I could before, yeah. because a big thing for me is like being able to interact with my body on stage when we're playing live and stuff. Mm. Um, so yeah, I kind of found this middle ground in just opening up my, my voice and not pushing too hard, not pushing too light. And then just, you know, allowing the way I move my mouth to kind of like shape the sound and, and be what gives me my, my unique signature of sound, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. But for, for, for this part, it's, it definitely, um, it definitely like, uh, diagrams, diagrams that. that yeah. That, I hear what you're saying. Words. I hear what you're saying too, because, um, you know, especially in, in like the second half of the section that we just listened to, you are very, very articulate and feed it to my children, right? There is a lot yeah. of like, there is a lot of like heavy articulation there, which I think is really cool. And actually like. I want to take a second to talk about what you mentioned, because one thing that I run into all the time, especially as, as you know, a, a vocal teacher is people will have a hurdle and their solution to that hurdle is to change the distortion. 
and for and a lot of the time it's change the mouth shape change the way that you're and you basically said two things that to 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 a voice teacher or vocal coach like me are just like music to my ears is you focused on relaxing and finding a a place of calmness in your voice and you also focused on taking your voice and making it better opening the mouth focusing on syllables focusing on pronunciation um so that's that's like if y'all are watching this and you're you're, you're <laughs> this, that is that is prime advice that is prime advice <laughs> now and you know, and and I think you know when we saw you back in uh, back in May, I really got that vibe because of course you know, being who I am and doing the job that I do, I I, I watch and I'm I'm like okay, how's this breathing like how how are they doing things and you definitely seemed relaxed and uh, relaxed and calm pretty much the whole time. Um, any other thoughts? I mean, I just remembered we have a song we're supposed to be listening to, so I uh, <laughs> I guess I guess I should push play. But any any other thoughts? Any any other things you want to point out? Um, no, yeah, I, I think, I think you really captured that well. So, so yeah, we can move on. All right. Hell yeah. Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right, cool. I'm going to pause it there because I know it's coming. Um, <laughs> so, this is something that I, I always ask lots of vocalists is you could have done some really cool vocal stuff. Bomb, bomb. Like you could have done a lot of really cool things and you didn't. And my first thing I'll say is I respect it. But um, <laughs> I respect it. But the second thing is, you know, you know, you've told me you told me before before we actually started filming that, um, you know, lyrically, uh, you don't you don't write the lyrics. But with decisions like that, um, maybe it's just you. Maybe it's a collective band thing. But talk to me about how you decide when to when to be vocal and when to shut the fuck up, because that's always interesting to me because um, it's more composition than than actual vocal technique. But yeah. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Yeah. Uh, like so when we're in the studio, a lot of stuff is already like cut up and I am like going in there and I am putting it in, in into place and we're recording it. A lot of times what will happen is like if you know I or any of the other guys while we're recording like hear something that wasn't originally a part of how Biggs or one of us heard or saw the vocal patterns or like we imagined different layers or maybe there's like a spot that just needs like a random stream to go in we'll like go and like throw stuff in but usually for me i just kind of like i i really listen to the way my delivery is like being punched in each and every part and i really try to make sure i cultivate a, a certain kind of embodiment of a feeling that comes with what the vocals are saying or trying to express um but, and, I, and that's usually is like where my mind and where my my vision is at when I'm in the studio, like um, making sure that there's not too many thoughts between myself and the microphone as I'm giving the deliverance. I really want to have a clear mind and I want to be able to become those words, you know, at the same time. Um, but you're right. There's a lot of things that we <laughs> could have done throughout these parts. And uh, I think it's, I think this song sometimes has like this less is more, Mm. kind of kind of feel going on you know and and the the heavier part 
maybe it's just me. I, I noticed like, and it's because it's my own voice. I don't know, like, um, and the kind of voice I have, it's just like, I noticed that when there's less of me doing um, something for a period that's drawn out and there's more breaks, my voice kind of like has a, has have the potential of being noticed more or not to be noticed, but like mm. I don't even want to use the word appreciate it, but it just marinates with what else is going on. You know what I mean? So I, I think his song kind of has a nice punch of powerful, powerful vocal parts, especially this part coming up. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I don't know if that answered your question correctly. <laughs> it totally does. <laughs> It, it totally does. You know, um, I mean, I, I have a lot to say about it, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I love the approach like and I think I think that that's one thing that I look for, you, you know, because I'm 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 in my mid 30s now. I've been listening to metal since before the year 2000. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, I sometimes I feel like, you know, I've heard every vocal tone I've heard, you know, so sometimes for me, like at, at, at where I where I'm at in a place in my life. I actually get wowed these days more by compositional choices than by tones specifically. Um, and so when I hear choices like this, it's a very intentional choice. You know, it's it's like if you were walking through the woods and you see a stack of three stones, you're like, somebody did that on purpose. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and then, <laughs> and then you're wondering like about this person who was hiking and which direction were they were go going and like, you know, all these things. Um, and so it, it kind of feels like that now. Um, oh, you said one thing that I really wanted to touch. Oh yeah. Um, also like, bro, I didn't know you were going to put us into like, you know, like Zen, like Zen mode. Not too many <laughs> thoughts between my mind and the microphone. I thought, I thought you were about to be like, be like water, you know? Um, <laughs> Might as well, right? <laughs> that's yeah, seriously. But that's a really good thing too, as as well. One thing I run into with so many of my students is that um, overthinking is a huge thing that gets in like everybody's way. And um, you know, when you're at the microphone, sometimes it is best to be like, okay, here's all the stuff that I know. Here's all the stuff that I that I have planned. Ugh. And yeah. you just kind of deliver it. And so that's really cool. That's really cool to hear. Um, those are most of my thoughts. But yeah, I love. Oh, and then another. Sorry, I remember the last thing I was going to say. See, you gave me so much to talk about. Um, <laughs> I think that your approach of using your voice at times like a marinade or like a seasoning makes sense for this genre. Like if we're listening to bands like Infant Annihilator, Cattle Decapitation, um, things like that, which I love those bands, like if their vocalist, if Dickie Allen or Travis Ryan was silent for like almost a minute, we would be like, where, yeah. where, where is it? Right. But with this, this more ambient, this more atmospheric, this, this more, I'm trying to think of keywords that aren't buzzwords, but I can't, uh, <laughs> with this genre, it just makes so much sense. And I, I feel like, I feel like you're, you're doing a really good job with that. You always do. Um, but let's, I'm going to go back a little bit because this, this part coming up is is very y'all are going to like it if you haven't heard it. Y'all are going to like it. <laughs> also, like I, the name is escaping me, but kudos, kudos to um, the the clean. Who, 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 what's the name of the person doing the cleans again? Oh, that is Adam. Adam, Adam. Biggs and, and Jared Klein. Yeah. Uh, Adam, Adam laying on the floor right there. Her chest all, all hurt. You know what I mean? But uh, Jared yeah. and back on the drum set. Beautiful. Beautiful. Both both voices are phenomenal. All right, here we go. Yeah, like that right there, bro. That's exactly what you're fucking talking about where you're like, <laughs> I stay back so that when I come in, it matters. Uh, like that section is huge like that. Like like it it makes me feel like this type of metal is is really like 
most of the metal that I listen to, like outside of the channel, is usually things like this that are more more atmospheric or or a, a certain handful of black metal bands. Um, and I like it because it it feels like like. And this is kind of something I, I I always go for with with our work as well, and we don't always hit it. You know, it's hard to it's a hard place to hit, but it feels like you know opening the door to Narnia almost. But instead of the Narnia, it's like the universe, and like <laughs> you know, thankfully it's not like Lovecraft uh, stuff. You know, it's it's more like you know, oh, I, I understand the nature of universe and time. And it's just, <laughs> it just, I, you know, I don't really have anything past that as far as like technical details, but I think I think that sometimes reserving things that are maximal increases their impact. So what you said before, like this is such a good example of it. Um, yeah. Very cool section, especially with those, the, that, that clean voice, that belting voice in the background, and then you trail off a little earlier, but the cleans continue on like, ah, oh, choice. Love that. Um, this had oh, to have yeah. been such a fun section for you to record. This had to have been so much fun or maybe it was miserable. I don't know. Tell me about it. Oh, it was, it was very, it was very exciting. I mean, like, you know, this part I was able to kind of really get into in a way that, that a lot of the parts are usually broken up a little bit more. So like this, these verses, I think I was able to like, you know, like I was able to track them yeah. more fluidly and uh, just unleash myself and, it felt great. I mean, it was definitely one of the high moments <laughs> in the recording session. For yeah, sure. It's one of my favorite. Yeah. It's one of my favorite moments on the entire album, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, anyways, let's, let's keep going. We got a song to listen to. But yeah, like <laughs> transcendent, transcendent. All right, here we go. We got to stop right before the the sax row. Um, so this is more of a technical question again, but one thing that I'm always interested in, um, because, you know, of course, you know, you can listen to a vo vocal and you can be like, oh, that's false chord. Oh, that's fry. Or most of the time it's more complicated than that. Um, but the way that we all relate to and interact with our bodies is very, very different. So the way that, you know, a guttural feels for me may not be the way even if both are done the same and correctly, right? The person relates to the sensations mentally on a different level, right? Um, so when you're doing your screams as best as you can, and sometimes it's hard to do just or, or to remember on the spot, but when you're doing your scream, like what does it like feel like? Where do you feel? And, it, and also if your answer, because sometimes this is people's answer. They're like, Mark, I have no idea. I'm like, okay, cool. That's totally fine. Uh, you know what I mean? That's a great answer. But where do you feel relaxation where do you feel any tension where does that feel like the grit and the distortion like if you if you had a sandpaper feeling is it like more here or is it down around the voice box hopefully not um talk to me about <laughs> what the sensation of your scream is like uh you know it's interesting like um like when we're when i get into a real sweet spot on on tour and um i'm kind of like really in my rhythm with uh performing it's like the inside of my body is really relaxed, but like the outside of my body is like solid and I'm just, I'm just kind of in place and I'm trying to like keep my posture as I perceive and well as I can. So everything from my stomach all the way up into my chest, my diaphragm, all the way up into my chest out through my throat, it just has all this room capacity to just to come out and, and go in the direction wherever I'm facing. But um, I, I, I tend not to necessarily feel per se um, the, the, the vocal experience itself coming through me. 
I, I'm more like feeling the emotion. I'm kind of like feeling like what my body, which, which direction my body's going to move in next. Sure. Um, you know, but, um, for this part in particular, it's, it's a lot of chess. If I were to put it in a spot, put it with a lot of chess in diagram, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of that. I have to have this whole part of my body open yeah. for this part in order for me to do it the way I want to do it. Um, but I, I really, yeah, it's, it's, it's really kind of like having a, a spot where I'm really sturdy and I, I can just anchor my body into the ground for just like a split second while everything inside is like super relaxed. So I don't like, so I could hold the notes longer and I can have more intensity at the same time. Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's kind of, I think that's a really important that's a really important thing for a lot of people to learn as well, especially, you know, <clears throat> so it seems like your your relationship to to your scream is a lot more in your torso and your core than it is in your mouth and throat. And like, you know, listen, if that's if that's helping you not clamp down on your laryngeal muscles, then so mode it be right. Uh, that's totally yeah. fine. One thing that you mentioned that is really important for a lot of vocalists, especially new vocalists, is the concept of and this is like this is totally contradictory if if you think about it <clears throat> like as it is stated. And so it's really com uh, uh, confusing for a lot of new vocalists is relaxing while holding things open while engaging. Like yeah. that, if you just put it that way, like that doesn't make any sense, right? But like when you, when we breathe, you know, we take this breath in. And then we scream and we hold the ribs out and we're engaging the core muscles. And yet at the same time, like, you know, in holding the ribs out and engaging the core muscles, hey, 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 like there's there's so much relaxation in the actual vocal tract. And it sounds like that, you know, that's that's kind of how how you've built it. Do you feel obviously, of course, there is some constriction is the wrong weird word, but there is some engagement because there's something in front of the airflow impeding it slightly that's just how vocalization works um yeah. do you ever feel like um because i feel like a lot of people if they were trying to mimic your tone would go for like the wheezy man tone which is not my favorite exercise like it's worked for some people that's wonderful that's great i have worked with students who have learned a lot of very not good subglottal pressure from that uh, <laughs> but i think that that's what they're going for and you know they'll get like this uh, uh, like this sort of thing and when done improperly that just feels like such a pinch here would you say and again i'm kind of asking you to remember things that you probably that you might not have been paying attention to at the time but do you feel like your vocal tract like the tube that sort of leads from your larynx all the way to, the, to your lips do you feel like there are any points where there is some strategic squeeze or does it feel almost as open as if you were just like yelling out to somebody hey you know what i mean talk to me about that yeah like you know it's it, 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 that's a good question because like i mean um you know, not every, not every show, not every tour is my voice absolutely pristine, pristine, uh, pristine and open and not restricted. And there have been, um, I think even on the last tour, there was a couple, couple shows that was just like really, you know, I was trying to like work out those knots. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, it does happen. And, um, in that case, I have to, um, I have to like, when that happens for me, like I, I tend to have to like do less movement and really just focus on again, like having a, a calm center and like not over pushing that part of my throat that may be swollen or blocked a little bit. Mm. So I have to really like roll my dice correctly, so to speak, when it comes to like knowing where my body is at, knowing, you know, how much my body, my vocal cords or my diaphragm can actually perform for me today, tonight. Um, but, uh, and typically, like I do, I like to like you know, um, I like to do a lot of warm ups to be prepared. Mm. So by the time I get to that point, by the time I get on stage, it's you know, it's 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 not like I'm I'm already kind of groomed for the experience. Sure. But um, but yeah, I, I have had many 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 experiences where my throat has gotten has totally got closed up. And like my talking voice is gone, but somehow miraculously, I, I can still sort of do my voice. I don't know if it translates the way it's supposed to. <laughs> I don't know if it does. And it's probably, 
been plenty of times where it hasn't. And, uh, sure. you know, that's just like any other vocalist. I'm sure they've gone through that time. But, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm sorry. Continue. I, I almost interrupted you. Please go ahead. No, no, you're fine. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's really an interesting thing when that happens because you know, when that happens and it has to be immediate vocal rest. And I have to really, really like not only give my voice rest, but I have to believe in my voice will be recovered by the next day. Like I have to actually tell myself and like pro- reprogram my, my my body to feel actually better, mm-hmm. you know, and, and like... Because like when you're playing show after show after show and something like that does happen, and you know, I'm sure it happened to a lot of us. You know, uh, especially for someone like me, I, I'm not trained. I didn't really know what I was doing. I, I take bits and pieces of, of stuff from from what I've learned throughout the years and stuff. And a lot of probably it was made me more consistent as a vocalist. It's just a continuous effort of being there, doing it over and over and over again. Um, but yeah, it. When that happens, it's, it can be a struggle. It can be a struggle for sure. I'm trying to like figure out how am I going to get back to where I, you know I'm supposed to sound. But yeah. it's like where I'm at. Um, so it can be challenging for sure. Yeah, um, you know, you're the first vocalist I've I've had on the channel or even really spoke to where you it's interesting when if I ask a vocalist if I have a conversation with somebody and you know we're talking about the things they notice the things they pay attention to oftentimes. I mean, oftentimes the answer is, I don't know. Right. Um, (laughs) And then outside of that, the answer I usually get is like resonance, relaxation. Um, And that's that those are great answers. Like those, those are great answers. It seems like your main focus is more of like an emotional meta. You're the first person who like, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of summarize and reduce what you're saying. You tell me if I'm not, if I'm not getting it, but it seems like you're, 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 if I had to take your philosophy for metal vocals and put it into like a one sentence it's focus on calmness you know it really focus, is yeah focus on focus on being calm being centered it's very i'm telling you man you're throwing some zen stuff my way <laughs> it, 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 yeah it's the, the calmness is such an essential part for me and but yeah you're, 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 on, you're on point with that i guess yeah <laughs> well yeah that's that's that it's it's a it's a good it's a good mentality that i think a lot of us even myself um, you know, cause, cause screaming is such a cathartic experience and, you know, sometimes in the studio, I'll just get swept up in it and I'll get a little too, not, I don't want to say too emotional, but I'll let my emotions get a little too much control. That's a better way to say it. And then I'll start to feel a little tension and then I'll start to feel things being unbalanced and I'm like, okay, whew, calm down, you know? Um, yeah. and then you said something else. Oh yeah. You said, you know, even sometimes when my voice doesn't feel right, I can miraculously still do my vocals. And Granted, I I think that many things when we're do, talking about like the human the human experience and 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 things aren't always able to reduce to one answer. But the the one that I would say is <clears throat> the most common is that because we have such a maximal style, it's easy not that we should, but it's easy to just push through it, right? You know, it's it, it's it's easier to if your voice is is strained and and hurting, it's easier to drop a guttural than it is to be like you know. Ooh, Right. Because that takes a lot of balance and, and stuff. Um, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, if you're on tour, it sounds like you're doing the best things for yourself that you can um, if your voice gets a little strained. So, you know, good job there. But if you're, if anybody is watching this and you're at home and you feel if if you feel pay, you heard it from him and me, you got to take immediate vocal rest. Um, <laughs> you got to do it uh, and then reexamine your, your technique if you, if you can, if you're able Um Anything else before we get back to the song? We got it. We got it. I'm going to go back again a little bit because we got a really cool section coming up here. Anything else you want to mention before I jump us back in? Well, let's just jump right back in. Hell yeah. Let's do it. I'm going to go back. I won't go back as far. Let's just do like 10 seconds. Here we go.
So I wanted to ask you about the, I I mean, I know I played it for kind of a while, but like my favorite part of most songs is the outro. Like I usually live for like the last minute of a song. And um, so I was like, I'm not pausing it. I'm not pausing it. So I actually wanted to ask you about the end of that, that video because it's kind of funky, but in a really cool way. So y'all are like in this empty, abandoned theater house. Nobody's there. Right. And then and then you hear I mean, we hear it at shows all the time. One more song. One more song. Like. Was the inclusion of that one more song somehow related to like the empty theater house and, and like because it makes it feel kind of ghostly. Right. Like the crowd's not even there. It's kind of creepy in a way, but in a cool way. Or was it just like, you know, hey, this sounds cool. Let's put that in there. What, what was the thought process behind that? Actually, I never even thought of, of what you said until now, but that's actually a really clever way of looking at why we may have done that. Oh, yeah. Um, but but <laughs> now, <laughs> the original reason probably is not as creative, but equally as, as interesting, I, I would say, is, you know, back in the day when we were younger and go on the shows, the kids would always be like, like before even the band played the first song, they'd be like, one more song, one more song. So we, we thought it'd be funny to kind of like throw that into the, you know, the end of the track. Hell yeah. And just have us all be like losing our mind. And it also kind of like goes right into more, which that whole song kind of, what that song talks about lyrically, mm-hmm. kind of like, kind of makes sense for someone asking one more song, one more song. Um, sure. But yeah, I like I like the way you kind of put those two together, like the empty arms. <laughs> that definitely has that kind of vibe. Yeah, you may you may have just gave and you know uh, gave the video a whole different kind of like a approach towards the end there. Well, if anybody ever asks, you can be like you can be like, well, actually, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah, but it's cool. It's a great song. It's hard to say what my favorite song is on the album, but it's it's very likely. Very likely that one. Um, And I think, I mean, we've talked about a lot, so it's probably okay for us to go ahead and wrap it up here. But yeah, excellent song. Um, Beautiful, beautiful composition. Great, great vocal, uh, vocal take. Um, But yeah, I love it. If if anybody's watching this and you haven't checked out Rivers of Nile or the work or Monarchy, I think probably the only reason Monarchy continues to be my favorite is because that's, you know how it is. That's the first album of something or the first everybody's first video game is always their favorite. You know what I mean? Um, But if I had to like actually sit down and say like which one is better, my head would probably explode. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Jake, thanks for being on with us, man. Anything else you want to say or anything else you want to point out or anything like that at all? Um. No, um, I just want to thank you, Mark, for having me. And uh, it was really good doing this video with you guys. And um, look for us in the future. We're going to we're on our way to Europe to play some festivals for the first time. Yeah. We're going to have a great time. And then we'll be back in the States to do a, do a headliner tour with the contortionists. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you for having me, man. It's yeah. Been a really good time. Is that, uh, is that uh, tour <clears throat> with the contour? I, I feel like I saw the poster or something for it. Maybe not. Is that coming through Arizona? I believe it is. I would yeah. hope so. Yeah. I would hope so. Cool. Yeah. Well, if it comes, yeah. if it comes to I'll, Arizona, I'll say hey. Absolutely, Mark. You better come out. I'd like to see you again. Hell yeah. Well, we'll we'll do it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Again, if you enjoy the comment, con- content, like, share, and subscribe. It means a lot. And as always, many thanks. Much love. I'm out.